Sometimes I know I talk a little loud, but we had a minister come to our church years ago in the Baptist church, and I couldn't hear a word he said. And I thought, well, how can faith come? Faith comes by hearing. We got to hear what you're saying. So I tried to talk clear and plain and uh, where people can hear, and I want you to understand where you can appropriate it by faith and realize not so much what you have been doing, but what the Lord has done. Say, so we got to get back on what the Lord has done for us and in us and through us. And we, you can relax in that. Okay, we're going to go into the book of Ephesians and do a little studying verse by verse. And we're going to start right now. And uh, Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 1, we're going to start. Some of the verses I will go through a little faster. So others I'll get hang up on because it has so much in it. And uh, every word is important. And look what it says. Paul, an apostle, special messenger of Christ Jesus, the, mess, the, the Messiah. Now remember, Paul was the apostle to the Gentiles. Okay, Peter and that's all in the Bible. We don't have time to share all the scriptures. I wish we did, but we'd be here all night. So you just have to put it down, write it down, check it out, and see that I'm right. By the divine will, the purpose, and the choice of God, I'm a pastor tonight, not because I chose to be a pastor. I would never choose myself to be a pastor. But God chose me. And so... I am a pastor by the will of God, the purpose and the choice of God. That's why I'm here. Nobody chooses this position. You just can't appoint a man, say, you're going to be our pastor. He's got to be called by God. Always remember that. Because if, you, if, you, if, if he's not, then you're in trouble. A, a pastor is more than one that just preaches the word. He's one, someone to love you when, you when you're naughty, when you're not doing too good. He's still your friend. He, he's still your shepherd. He still will be right there with you. Okay, you understand that. That's important. And the choice, of, and to the saint, now this is, he's writing this letter and he's saying who he is. He's introducing himself. He's telling us uh, uh, why he became a, an apostle. It was God that chose him. So all of that's in there. And then he said, now this letter is to the saints. Uh, now, of course, if they were in Ephesus, but to us too, okay? Got to see that. So you got to bring, put yourself in there and say it like this. And to the shield of faith, the consecrated set apart ones at Hanahan. Okay, put it down where you live. Now that's getting down to where we live. Ain't changing the scriptures, but you got to understand what the word of the Lord is saying. He's talking to us, talking to you, all right? And me. Who are also faithful and loyal and steadfast in Christ Jesus. That's us. Okay? And the devil might whisper in your ear, well, you're not, no, you say, shut up. I am. God says I am. Say what God says you are. And I can tell you without a doubt, without being hypocritical, I am faithful, I am loyal, and I am steadfast in Christ Jesus. And I have 60 years of backtrack. You can backtrack it in my life. And, you should, and I know many of you can say the same thing. Okay? Now, that's how you break it down. Now he says, Paul is saying to may grace and God's unmerited favor and spiritual peace, which means peace with God and harmony and unity and undisturbedness be yours from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now all of those things should be working in us. Look, look at that now. Look what it says. Peace. How many, how many of you know God is the God of peace? Hmm, a God of peace, a God of harmony, a God of unity, a God of undisturbedness. Be yours from God. That's a prayer that Paul is praying. And, and I'm saying that is a prayer that we're praying too. To be able to walk in the storm, but you have the peace of God on you. That's powerful. How many have experienced that in your life? Yeah, everything around you. And there's times we've all been sh shooken. But, but there's a learning process as God establishes us more and more and more in himself. We become people of peace. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they what? Will be called what? The children of God. 
So God is a God of peace. Anywhere you go and there's all kind of disturbance and, and, and that, that ain't God. God of peace. Okay. Now there's times that people act up, how to act up in church, you know. And, and it's, it's ugly. But don't just keep you cool, just relax. They'll have to give an answer to God. So we keep our cool. People are sometimes ugly to us. I bless them. Because I know what the Bible says. And I can give you the scripture. And so can you. First Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. Romans uh, 12, 21 says, Overcome evil with evil. Huh? Checking, yeah, I'm just checking down to see if you wake. Yeah, you wake. Okay. Overcome evil with good. When somebody curse you out, what do you do? You bless them. Why? Because God will bless you. See, that's why I'm so blessed. That's why you're so blessed. We bless people. Just bless them. You're no good bum. Bless you, brother. I love you. But she said, you can't do that unless God's done the work. Because if God ain't done the work, see, we're standing here today to pay our last respects to this guy that the pastor just shot. <laughs> you don't think I haven't seen that? Not with a real gun, but I think with their little tongue right there. I had some uh, years ago, this one told, this guy told me, right in church, he said, go to hell. I said, oh, no, God saved me from hell. I ain't going to hell. I'm going to heaven. See, I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. See, I ain't going to believe your word. All right, now let's move on. May blessings, I mean, you, God wants to bless us. Praise uh, <coughs> be to the God and Father. That's the next verse. Uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah, who has blessed us, notice this, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual, spiritual blessing given by the Holy Spirit, blessings in the heavenly realm. <coughs> God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, before he created the earth, before anything, you know, the, the three of them got together and they're talking and, 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 and God the Father said, now Jesus, you're going to die for them, you know, and, 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 uh, and the Holy Spirit, you're going to convict them of sin and you're going to give them power and, and I'm going to bless them. And they got together and uh, decided that we're going to have a whole bunch of children we're going to bless. And we're just releasing that blessings in the heavenly realm. And when Christ comes down on that cross, those blessings are going to come down uh, uh, with him. And he's going to distribute those blessings to us. Uh, and how many of you know, no, we've got a lot of blessings anyway. Huh? Uh, for blessings of being forgiven and of being healed and being strengthened, being loved, being accepted. Just on and on and on. All the blessings that have come down from heaven through Christ Jesus through the person of the Holy Spirit, and he's blessed us. Everybody say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Amen. And tell God that every day you're blessed. Now, here we go. Why did he do all of that? Look at that next verse. <coughs> Why did he do all of that? Even as in his love, he chose us actually picked us out for himself as his own. Everybody say, I am his own. I am his own. How many has got a car? Is that your car? Yes. Yeah, that's your own. How do you treat it? You change your own and all that? You put gas in it? You treat it pretty well good. It's your own. God treats us good because we're his own. Aren't you glad you don't belong to yourself? Say, say, if you belong to yourself, you're just going way out there and you're just going to be in big trouble. I know a lot of people in big trouble because they don't understand we belong to God. Now make sure you understand that. I belong to God. Everybody say, I, I belong. belong. Now I'm teaching you how to appropriate what God has done. So you can read this to doomsday, but if you don't appropriate it by faith and receive it, it will never become experimental to you. And when you realize you're loved, when you're accepted, when you belong to God, you have eternal life, God has forgiven you of all your sins, you appropriate that, you accept that. You don't say, God, no, no, no not me, Lord. <laughs> Willie, maybe, you know, maybe Mike, not me. Okay, you're calling God a liar. Ooh, tell it like it is, Bob, believe it will. 
Some of us have been guilty of that. And I'm not fussing at you, but I'm saying, see, if God says it, it's truth. Absolute truth. Now listen to this, listen to this. This thing is so full of power. We are his own in Christ before the foundation of the world. We belong to him. And he knew that we belong to him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy, consecrated, and set apart for him. Are you holy? Yes. It's awful quiet in here. Are you holy? Yes. Are you consecrated? Yes. Are you set apart? Yes. For who? Yes. That's it. See, that's your identification. And blameless, blameless in his sight, even above reproach before him in love, in his love. See, there's a love, we call it agape love, but this love is, that's the first fruit of the Spirit. This love is, consumes you, controls you, motivates you, excites you. You can feel and sense that love each day. I am loved, you are loved, we are all loved. Aren't just words. That's a real experience. I am loved. You are loved. You can't get no more love than you are right now. Can't get no more forgiveness. If you're forgiven, you're forgiven. If you're loved, you're loved. Wow. What the Lord has done. Man, that's powerful. Yeah, but you know, I got to start doing this. Well, now it might be a good idea to go to bed a little earlier than you've been doing, or, or maybe uh, don't eat all the pie, leave some for Pastor Bob. But I mean, you know, but listen, minus nothing, you are loved. Why you were yet sinners. Well, you straighten up, I love you, but <clears throat> as long as you were messing up, I ain't gonna love you. That ain't love. That's hypocrisy. See, love cannot help from loving. That's what love does. I know I'm, I aim to drive it in there. Wow. Now, let's just draw from this. Now, boy, just that alone, we could camp out there. But let's go to the next verse. Oh, my goodness. This thing is getting rich. For he foreordained us, God did. Now let's put it personal. For he first, for he foreordained Mike, myself, Bob, Willie, Joshua, every one of us. He foreordained, he chose us, planned in love. For us, you know, it's so exciting to see a young couple get married and, and they have their first child. I remember our first child and Susan me, you know, she's looking like a barrel, you know, and I'm, I thought I couldn't walk down the street with, with, with my wife that, that looks like she's got some type of stomach problem. But man, I walked down there, just my chest sticking out, you know, like this. We went shopping and we prepared everything we could possibly get for that child before the child even come. We planned before that child came into this world to everything it would need. And that's what God did to us. He planned all of it way before the foundation of the world was brought into existence. He knew us by name. And he was, and I was so excited with my first child. You know, when I was in the Air Force and my first child cost, uh, man, it was rough, $12.50. <laughs> but you know, I took it to Valley Forge, Pennsylvania. That's an Army hospital there in Pennsylvania. I was stationed in Newcastle, Delaware. And they said, goodbye. I said, goodbye for what? I just brought my wife in. She's expecting it. Yeah, but you, you know, we'll, let, you, we'll call you when the child gets here. And they run me out of the hospital. 
Today they they take movies of of, of you know. <laughs> yeah, I, we won't go that way. But and so two and I think two days or something to call me. You had a little girl. You can come and see your wife now. But I didn't like that. But I you know what can I do? But see, we had planned everything for our first child and. I get a kick out of uh, some people when they have their second child and their third child. <laughs> they really start praying about that time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, why, how, explain that love to me. What did you feel? You can't explain it. Oh my. Looks just like me. No, it looks like mama. No, it don't look like me. <laughs> Explain what you what you feel there. Explain that love. Expl- you can't, it's spiritual. Nobody makes you love that child. It just it's been imparted into us by God. See, there's so much imparted into us by God. We think it all has to be intellectual. So much of it is spiritual that He imparts into us. Bob, how can you love that person when they've done that? God's love. God's love. That's all. You you don't try to muster it up. You you can't muster it up. It's either there or not there. He imparts into us by his spirit. You know that you know you know. How did you really get there? No, no, no. He just opens your understanding and your mind. It's in part, it's called revelation knowledge. You just see. I was once lost, but now I see. I was once lost, but now I see. How do you see? I don't know. It's a miracle of God that I see. called being born again by the spirit of the living God. All right, look at that. Look at that. Mm, My goodness. For he foreordained us, destined us, planned in love for us to be adopted, revealed, revealed. Let me tell you something. He He has revealed unto us that we are his children by his spirit. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what the Lord, what, what, how's that go? Entered to the heart of man, but he has revealed it, how? Unto us, how? By his spirit. That's how precious the Holy Spirit is. That's why I say, Lord, I pray that I will not quench the Holy Spirit, that I will listen to him in my spirit, man. Revealed as his own children. Now, remember the scriptures? It says, we know that we're sons of God, how? By his spirit. See, what you learn here tonight, your brain will try to figure it out. But whatever God teaches you by his spirit, as I speak, it'll catch. It's caught more than it's taught. It's caught more than it's taught. Yes, we teach, but it's caught as it is taught by the spirit of God. But if our mind is somewhere out there or you're or this or that, I mean, you're just, just concentrating on what the Lord is saying here tonight through your pastor. Listen, he adopted us, revealed as his own. We, we have been revealed. We know, I know I'm a child of God tonight. I know I'm saved. Well, how do you know you're saved? I just know I'm saved because the Lord has revealed it to me. I know I'm, I'm loved because he's revealed that to me. Oh, let me tell you what I'm teaching here tonight. I struggled for years in. Are you listening? I struggled for years in it. Until I was able to tap onto the precious, precious Holy Spirit. And he began to teach me. Teach me. Reveal to me. And that, it's all in my spirit, man. And it's just wonderful. And 
Christians, many of you understand what I'm saying. Look, as his own children, through Jesus Christ, in accordance with the purpose of his will, I am a child of God, not because I really chose to, but he chose to make me his child. According with the purpose of his will, because it pleased him and was his kind intent. Ooh, my. Why did you do that for that person? Because it was your kind intent. That's how the goodness of God works. You gave that person that much money. Why did you do that? It was my kind intent. It, I, it's God. <laughs> it's God. But we just see it in the natural, but we don't see the spiritual that, that motivated that person to do that. Well, I would never do it. No, I know you won't. But when you let God be Lord, when you realize he is, you are his, and he will do a work, he has started. I like what Paul says, Philippians 1, 6. Paul says, I am confident. I'm confident that he began a good work and you will continue that work until the coming of the Lord. When you, in, when you go into doubt, when the enemy's attacking you and making you feel like, I mean, how can God ever use me? Rebuke that in Jesus' name, for it is God working in you. But he lets us get shook up a little bit where we will grab hold of him and say, Lord, I'm holding on. He says, I know, but you don't understand it because you hold on to me, but I'm holding on to you. Amen. And then you realize, oh, he'll never leave me nor forsake me. I'm sold out. He, I'm his, I'm his, I'm his. Nothing else matters anymore. I am his. But all that's spiritual. That's what he's doing in his children today. Look, According with the purpose of his will, because it pleased him and was his kind of intent. Look at verse 7. Mm -hmm. This thing gets richer. Mm -hmm. Look at this. So that we might be to the praise and the commendation of his uh, glorious grace and favor and mercy, which he so freely bestowed on us in the beloved that is in Jesus. Now look at that scripture. When I look at you, I look at praise. You are the praise of the Lord. You're the, you're, you're the praise, accommodation. We each bring praise to him. But don't I have to do something to make him love me? If you find out, let me know. You just have to realize it's his intent because he is love and love can do nothing but love. And he loves us so much. Now this is where it's important. The more you are able to receive his love, the more you will be able to love him back. We love him, why? Because he first loved us. Now that will increase as we walk in the Lord. That has increased in my life tremendously today. So I love him more today than I did 60 years ago. But I've learned to love myself with his love and I accept myself and then I've learned to love you not because you're, you're good to me and you are good to me, but you're God's children. You're God's sons and daughters. Wow. Powerful. God loves you. You walk out here tonight, everything might be going haywire out there. The more you understand and comprehend and God reveals his love to us, doesn't matter. You know, our brother Reed, a lot of things mattered in his life. He shared a lot with me about everything over here and his life, his health, his problems in India and all that. But I don't think he's concerned for any of that right now. 
and we shouldn't be either. It's so easy, and I know the pressure. Don't you think I don't know what pressure is? I'm not going into that. I know what pressure it is to stand and not fold up under pressure. Can you imagine the pressure that was on our Lord and Savior in the garden, especially in the garden? Yeah, yeah, powerful. Oh. But he stood to test. Angels, angels. Amen. Amen. You know, and we're, we're constantly learning, and, and, we, and I think that we, we have to learn some things that we've already learned. I, I'm learning things more and more in a, in, a, in, a, in a greater dimension, and I learned it maybe 50 or 60 years ago. It's like you won't miss something until you lose it. Yeah. Susan, you know, she's over there, can't hardly walk, and I'm helping her, you know, and everything. And I said, honey, because Susan is, man, she's fast. She's, you know, lightning. Was, was that the Lord? No, that was Susan. <laughs> I've seen her holding a baby, fixing coffee for me, and taking her foot and opening the refrigerator door. <laughs> I go, <laughs> and I said, honey, just relax. Yeah, but I got to get rid of the church. No, you just call Justine and she'll take care of that tonight. I had to almost command her, in the name of Jesus, sit down in that chair. <laughs> so she obeyed her, her daddy. That's me. See, see, when you first get married, it's your boyfriend, I mean, your, your husband, but later on you become a daddy to your wife, and she becomes a mama. How many knows that? Huh? Yeah. There's a mama right there. Look at that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So she's my mama, and she's my girlfriend, she's my wife, she's my sister in the Lord, and she's my helper. And, but she's over there with that ice pack under, uh, underneath her, uh, 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 right, right, behind the, right behind the knee there, you know. But she's coming forth. We've been, we've been knocked down before like that, but God always raises us up. So, yes, study to show thyself approved unto, unto God and a workman under shame, but, but receive. Receive God. Receive his love. Receive the fruits of the Spirit. Let him manifest himself through us. Let him be Lord as that he manifests himself through us. We have such a great time out uh, when we witness, um, I took Susan to um, uh, Lawhorn. Yeah, I ordered a nice steak and potato, and Susan ordered a big salad with uh, with salmon on it. You know, and she, so we're. Uh, I've seen a, down there a little bit. I've seen four women and a man. So I got up and I went down there and I said, oh, I got, I got to ask you a question. I said, You one man, you got four women. I, I got my man. I only got one. What's your secret? They thought that was so funny. They laughed, you know. I said, listen, if y'all had your vitamin pills today, you know, so I, I give them all the, the, the tracks on all of that, you know. Then I told them about my joke about, you know, uh, God talking to Adam, you know. How many of you have heard that joke? Over one, more than one, you don't hear it again, okay. Uh, but anyway, uh, people like that, see, and they laugh, you know. And, you know, you don't know the impression that God is doing through you two people. So I go back to my table, and I'm, I'm eating, and they get up and come by, and they just thought we were wonderful being married 63 years and, and everything and all. Anyway, the time came for us to pay our bill. The waitress came, and I said, how much you owe me? <laughs> That's what I always tell them, you know. She said, uh, everything's taken care of. I said, what do you mean? Yeah, those people that you were talking to, they paid for it. I said, oh, holy, my name is Jimmy. I'll take all you give me. <laughs> but see, God is just good. You know, that just did something for us. But we must have done something 
for them too. See, just what flows, it's not always what you say, but what flows out of you. Your countenance, the love that flows out of you, the kindness on your face, the, the, the smile that you give to people. These are, our expressions are very important when we, our expressions can be the expressions of Jesus. Our countenance is important. So all of that people received that, see? And it done something for all of them, and they paid for it. So I said, wow, that's great. All right, here we go. I've got about 10 more minutes, we'll let you go. All right, in him, everybody say, in him. In him. God took all of us and put us in him. Okay? Now, in him is everything we need. I want you to understand that. Just about if you go to Walmart, everything you need is in, in Walmart. Food, clothes, automobile parts, oil, everything is in Walmart. And you're in Walmart. We're in Christ. Everything is in Christ, so everything belongs to us because we're in Christ. Important to understand that. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. We're in the world in Christ. So all through the scriptures, underline... And do I'm breaking my new Bible in. You see how much I'm beginning to mark it up. Just mark it up. I mean, learn where it is in that Bible and chew on it every day. I mean, it just, take one scripture and just, and God will enlarge it. I mean, it just comes alive. You get off, you know, when you suck an orange, you suck it just one time. You suck that baby to there ain't no life in it. <laughs> That's why I eat that steak, man. I, eat, I chew that thing to there ain't nothing left but juice. All right, listen. Listen to this. In him we have redemption. In him we have redemption. You're in him, so you have redemption. What does that mean? You've been bought back. You're clean before God. You're a child of God. Your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. You've been made righteous by his goodness, by his mercy. He has redeemed us. Delivered and salvation through his blood. Whew. Ooh, man. Period. That's it. Receive it. Amen. Yeah, but you know, I have that. No, no, you don't. No, no, just receive the forgiveness. Just receive the redemption. Receive what the Lord has done. Receive that you're accepted. See, I'm pushing this thing because I ain't, you know, I may go to heaven any day now. You know, I'm looking forward to it, but you never know. But I want to leave you guys full redeemed, knowing that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Look what it says. Through his blood, the remission or forgiveness of our offenses, our shortcomings, our trespasses, in accordance with our riches. Huh? I messed up on that? Oh, the riches and the generosity of his gracious favor. Have you ever met somebody generous? It's there somewhere. Just generous. Just loves to give. <laughs> you might got changed for a dollar. <laughs> Maybe I got you in for half a dollar. <laughs> Just generosity, you know. You know, there's no kids in here to pick up this money, so I'll just throw it over there. <laughs> See, he's learning to receive. It might be at the altar, but wherever it's in, come and get it. All right, let me see if I can put another one down here, see what happens. Let me throw that over there. See, they listen to my message. They're learning to receive. Now, here's a $5 bill. Ain't nobody going to come after that. I know that. Uh, now you keep it now. You keep that. Oh. 
Y'all don't tell Susan I've been giving money away now. Okay. But see, God is generous, generous. I just love to give, give, give. You can't give enough. It's God, God, God. You say, yeah, but good gracious. I, I, don't you understand? It's, are you ignorant of his goodness? Not knowing that it's his goodness that leadeth thee to repentance. I beat him down, Bob, beat him down. No, it's God's goodness through you, Bob. God's goodness, God's goodness. What you got, son? There's a word here, it's abundance. Huh? Say it again. There's a word here, abundance. Abundance, abundance. abundance. that's right, abundance. Abundance. Wow. But you see, here's the thing about it. As God gives you that, see now they, they receive that money, but they're gonna they're gonna share that with their sister. <laughs> I, I'm gonna say that again. I don't know. If, uh, uh, see, 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 God's working in them, and, and was generous to them, and now they're gonna be generous, and when they see their sister, they're gonna share that money with them. Isn't that wonderful? Let's give them a hand on that. Oh, that is great. That is, if, if Charles don't get it first. I mean, <clears throat> <laughs> here, son, let me put this up for you. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay, here we go. Five more minutes, I'll let you go. Which he lavished, lavished upon us and every kind of wisdom and understanding, practical insight and prudence. He lavishes it on him. love that. Lavish it. Listen to what Jesus said. He said, I'm going to tell you all something. Satan has come to kill, to steal, and destroy. But I have come to give you abundance. Put that on the, on the board there, if you will. Where's that found? I forgot where it's found. It's in John somewhere, or John. Where? 10 10, right. How could I forget it? 10 10, and then, right. Now look at the Amplified. <clears throat> and we'll, we'll close on this because we're just going to milk the Word of God here for a few more months. All right, we got it, John, St. John 10 10. The thief comes only in order to steal and kill and destroy. I came that you may have and enjoy life. Are you enjoying life? All right, make your mind up, you're going to enjoy it. And have it in abundance to the full tilt is over, flows. Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you that you are a gracious God. And we thank you for your love. We thank you, Father, you have restored us to full fellowship and we thank you Lord that we move and have our being because of you Lord and we love one another and we love people and I thank you Father we overcome evil with good we are a people of God made holy and consecrated by the redemption that's in Christ so we thank you now and all of God's people said amen